Sandpaper Gate. The 2018 ball tampering scandal is one of the dirtiest, most corrupt stories in cricket, but next to no one knows the real story behind it. I think the way it's seen is, well, Smith, Bancroft and Warner were involved in ball tampering, they're the big villains. However, as you kind of see as I go through this video, I think your opinions will change. So let me, let me kind of, let me lead you through it. So okay, without pointing out the obvious, um, so yeah, 2018, there's a series between South Africa and Australia. Bancroft is caught live on TV rubbing sandpaper um, on the ball, which he produces out of his trousers. He's got it hidden there. Um, soon after, uh, Bancroft, uh, Steve Smith, who's a captain at the time, and David Warner, who's vice captain, all get one-year bans from all forms of cricket. So, okay. Now, let's not make any false pretenses here. The ball was definitely being tampered, but that's not why Smith, Warner and Bancroft got banned for a year. That's what most people don't realise. They think that's the reason. It's absolutely not. Okay, so to understand why they got banned, we first got to um, face something in cricket which every true cricket fan knows, but I guess the casual viewer doesn't really understand. And it's that ball tampering is a normal part of cricket. Every team does it. It's to think of it as some big horrible thing is in the same way to treat parking on a double yellow in the UK as a big thing or jaywalking, crossing the street when the lights aren't green in America. Yes, it's technically illegal, but I mean, come on, man. I mean, we know everyone's doing it. It's not the same as a, like a murderer or a rapist. And just to kind of drill home the point, Here's just a few of the cricketers, all very high profile, obviously, who have been caught for ball tampering. They've been caught live. Um, yeah, so you got Tendulkar, you got Dravid, you got Atherton, Michael Atherton, the old England captain, Shida Fridi, Faf Duplessis, current South African captain, Wakar Yunus, to name but a few. Now, let me quickly run down what happened with a few of these. So Tendulkar was caught um, on on air, just kind of fiddling with the ball. He was he was he was uh, tampering with the scene, and basically what happened was the he initially got a one match ban. That's it, not a one year. He got a one match ban. Now, funnily enough, the BCCI, the Indian Cricket Board, they fought that, and guess what? The, guess what the ICC did? They they took back the ban. So in the end, Tendulkar got absolutely no punishment for tampering the ball. Uh, Rahul Dravid against uh, New Zealand was found to have a lozenge, a sweet, uh, you know, one of those cough syrup sweets. And he was caught just, you know, fiddling, shining one of the sides, you know. You're not allowed to do that. Guess what happened to him? Fixed, fined 50% of his match fee. The money he makes from one match, he just had to give 50% of away. He could still have 50%. It's a pretty good wage. Uh, Michael Atherton in the West Indi against the West Indies was caught having some dirt in his pocket. Okay, and he was rubbing dirt onto the ball to rough it up. What happened to him? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely no repercussions of at all. Uh, Chris Pringle, who's not on the list, um, New Zealand bowler as well, he basically admitted to using a bottle cap and just kind of using that to scratch at one side. No punishment. Afridi was caught biting the ball on air. If you see this picture here, biting the ball. And um, he got a ban for two T20s. So he was banned for two 2020 matches. That's it. Okay, fast been caught twice. Waka Yunus is doing it. This is, it happens. Everyone knows, it's, it knows it happens. It is technically legal. But the repercussions have never been anything close to a year. So, okay, now let's run through the timeline, what happens. Okay, so the story for the Sandpaper Gate basically happens because Bancroft is caught by TV coverage cameras, um, pulling out something from his trousers and scratching up the ball. And literally, on sc in, the, in the stadium, they have a, they've got a video up there. And, you know, the umpires see it. They're like, okay, let's have a look at the ball. They all deliberate. They have a look at the ball. They go, yeah. There's not that much, there's no real damage on there. Don't worry about it. No penalty is awarded. 
Umpires have the right, if they kind of feel that the ball has been tampered, to say there and then on the spot, five penalty runs. They're like, eh, not a big deal. Because you have to realize something here. Ball tampering, yes, it's against the rules. And where you, and if you've been following Sandpaper Gate as the only, th you know, that's your first real exposure to um, ball tampering, you are fool, you are fooling yourself if you think it's that big a deal. The umpires know it's happening. Both teams know they're tampering the ball. Okay, this is not a big deal, so they don't even award anything. The next thing. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. So, obviously, at the end of the day, at the press conference, Smith and Bancroft come out and apologize. Why, you know, there's so many possibilities for why they apologized. Who knows what was kind of said in the dressing room. But anyway, they come out and apologize. At this stage, Warner is not present, nor is he mentioned, okay? Those two have come out. They've just apologized. That's it. So what happens next? Okay, so the ICC take their apology. They go think about it. And they basically decide... Okay, Smith, you're going to get one match ban. You are going to um, uh, fine you the comp your full match fee and you're going to get four demerit points. Bancroft, 75% match fee, no match bans, yet three demerit points. And that's it. And nothing for Warner. Warner is not mentioned. Why would he be? Okay, Smith and Bancroft have come out and said it. Smith, it, Warner is still not mentioned. Now, so let's have a look at this. The incident has happened. An apology has been made. And the ICC has done the investigation and they've ruled, they've dealt out their punishment. So you think that will be all done and dusted, right? Unfortunately not. For some God knows what reason, the Australian Prime Minister, Mike Malcolm T Turnbull, comes out and he's like, uh, he's on air. He's like, this is a shocking disappointment. Clearly the guy doesn't watch cricket. He's just a politician who wants, I don't know, man. It's just like... He sees it as an opportunity to try do his whole politicking, uh, politicking angle. Um, yeah, man, he's got his own agenda. Who knows what that is? But he calls Cricket Australia and asks for the strongest action to be taken. No Warner. He's not said Warner needs to be involved as well. He's just like, do something. Okay, so Cricket Australia, led by James uh, Sutherland at the time, have decided to launch an investigation. And guess what they find? They found that Bancroft was coached by Smith and Warner, who was a vice captain at that time. Nobody else. Not, and think about that. Think about what's being said there. Darren Lehman, the coach, isn't involved. The bowlers who, who the ball tampering is being done for, who are going to be using the ball to try take the wickets which result from the ball tampering, if done successfully, apparently they don't know about it. They're clueless. But the only guilty parties, of course, have to be Bancroft and Smith, because they've already come out and apologised. But the only other person is David Warner. That's it. Investigation finished. Da, 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 da. And of course, they all get banned for one year from all forms of cricket. It is crazy. Now, again, I want you to keep in mind, the next worst punishment ever handed out for ball tampering was a two-match ban. And those two matches were T20s, okay, for Shida Freedy, who bit the ball. I mean, it was, it was a joke what he's doing. There's just no tact or anything to it. So then, and this is what just disgusts me, man. Like, if you're a proper cricket, uh, if you've been watching cricket for a long time, you know they don't deserve the one-year ban. But the media and the public, they love it. They love, uh, they, they want to see Steve Smith in tears. They want to see Warner in tears. They want to see Bancroft in tears. You know, it, it's, it's sick. And it's sick because it's just, it's ridiculous and it's unfair. Now, tons of cricketers came out and thought the bans were too harsh. And of course, why wouldn't they? They know it's too harsh. But as we'll kind of learn, I mean, these, these cricketers know what the real story is. They know why these one-month bans have been handed out. And, of course, we'll be learning that in the video soon. But they know this isn't right. Well, anyway, so, look, what was the real reason for these unfair bans? Why a year? Why a year for something which everyone knows is happening... Uh, which no one has been punished anywhere 
in the same solar system in terms of punishments for you know and and why david warner what's so special about david warner why was he so what why him okay so the first clue came from harsha bogle okay and um, Harsha Bogle came out and said, he goes, look, I honestly do not believe any other country would have handed its captain and lead player a one-year ban for attempted ball tampering. And he's completely right, you know? Obviously, if you go on social media and idiots who just need to have a view and opinion on everything, ball tampering, it's cheating. Oh, the game is brought into dispute. Oh, you've ruined the good game of cricket. But, you know, people who know this game, they're like, what the hell? What the hell? No other country, no board is going to, give them a one-year ban and especially steve smith david warner bancroft is up and coming he's not as important in the story he's a scapegoat but david warner and steve smith two of the best players two of the best batsmen of this generation how can you give them a one-year ban what are you trying to do cricket australia these are your players he's born now here's where it got even more interesting Michael Clark, former uh, former Australian captain, he his he sends out two tweets hinting that James Sutherland and Cricket Australia aren't telling everything here that there's ulterior motives. So the first tweet, um, the truth, the full story, accountability and leadership. Until the public gets this, Australian cricket is in deep shit. Okay, sort of cryptic. Next one. Too many reputations on the line for the full story not to come out. Cape Town change room, changing room, is a very small place. What he's trying to hint at is this, he's trying to, he's trying to, he knows what's going on. But for what, you know, these players can't come out and just say it. There's too many repercussions. But he's trying to say, are you really telling us that Warner, Smith and Bancroft, Warner's the only other person on top of Smith and Bancroft involved here? Nobody else knew? That's what he's trying to hint at, the public. Okay? So have you got it yet? How, do you, um, take a guess. If you know your cricket, you know, a little bit of trivia. It's a bloody hard question, yeah, to see if you can spot it. But do you, have you spot it? Have you spotted what the real reason is? Okay, and finally, I say clue number three. Gautam Gambier, who's always been a very outspoken guy, he was the first guy to kind of come out and just say it. He said it semi-subtly. But he's the first one who came out and said it. So he basically, he commented that the sanctions imposed on Smith and Warner are harsh. And he suspected that both may have paid their roles in a 10-month pay dispute with Cricket Australia. Okay? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, he's on the money here. This is why um, Smith and Warner got banned for a year. So here's what... Here's a story which is never covered with um, side by side with Sandpaper Gate, even though it's the heart and essence of these one year bans. And a simple man. So in 2017, a 20 year agreement with how Cricket Australia, they get all the revenue. So all the money that's made through, for, uh, in, through cricket for Australia goes to Cricket Australia. And they have a contract in place which says this, this percentage of your earnings has to be you know shared between players and this is your international players this is your domestic players the ones who are playing the equivalent of county cricket in australia you know you have to allocate to kind of certain um, training academies so on so on so on cricket australia wants to lower the percentage which they're paying out and they want only the inter the big international players to be paid and they don't want any payment for the domestic players they would, however, pay their star players more because they believe, look, it's the big international players who bring in the money. So they deserve more pay because, of course, they want they you've got to basically pay off someone to, um, you know, when you want to basically take the you want to take the lion's share. So that's what they're proposing now. Surprise, surprise. Guess who led? Uh, guess who were the figureheads opposing this? on the for the players union the ACA which is essentially a union for the Australian cricketers they Smith and Warner were like no you've got to you've got to pay us more you've got to share more of the pie and this is despite that they would have been better off if cricket Australia's model goes through so essentially they're fighting for their you know 
all the other cricketers in the Australian system, they will be better off, but they are fighting for this, okay? It's a very, from a personal point of view, you cannot get more unselfish from this. And seeing as this captain and vice captain, they're cushy, they don't have to do this. They can just move aside, you know? And it's because of them that basically there was a 10 month standoff between Cricket Australia and the Australian players. To the point of where the Australian players saying, we're not going to play for the Ashes. As in, we just won't play cricket. Until you give us what we deserve, we will not play it. And there was a point where there was a genuine consideration. Are the Ashes going to go forward? Because, now, here's the thing. 20 years ago, there's no way the Australian cricket players could have done this. But nowadays, with the IPL, the Caribbean League, all the T20 leagues around the world, they're like, well, if you won't pay us... We'll make, we can still make our money. We'll still get our cricket in. So Cricket Australia essentially had to fold. And they reached a deal. But make no mistake about it, the Australian board were pissed off. They were furious. They had to share far more of the income, of which they're making way more nowadays, by the way. They're making way, way more than they used to. The Big Bash is thriving. They've just got a new, um, what is it? broadcasting contract as well. I'm not sure with which uh, TV station, but they're making a lot more money. And let's make no mistake about it. Yes, they organize all the stuff, but us as viewers, we don't, we're not bothered about what James Sutherland and Cricket Australia, how they organize it. We want to see the big guys. We want to see the Warners. We want to see the Steve Smiths and so on. And that's it, man. That's what happened. So and then when Sandpaper Gate happened on air, Cricket Australia saw, boom, let's punish these guys for doing what, for basically having us lose our money. Let's make a show of them. Let's, make, let's show them how we treat people who oppose us. And the simple truth is, it was just sandpaper gate. Just because the TV cameras caught uh, Cameron Bancroft pulling the sandpaper out, that's why it happened. They, you know, it's as simple as this. If Smith and Warner had not led the fight, um, against Cricket Australia, if they had not appealed for what they believed was fair for all the uh, for the other domestic players, Sandpaper Gate wouldn't have happened. There was no way it'd be a one year ban. Had they not been captain and vice captain, there wouldn't be a ban. There, and Cameron Brancroft was just he was caught in this. You know, he was the one who scratched it, so you got to punish him as well. So yeah, no, they wouldn't have been banned. And that's it, man. And it's as so simple. I, I mean, it's pretty obvious as well. I'll just drill it in. Why, why would they want to humiliate Smith and Warner on such a massive level? It's simple, man. It's a don't fuck with us. It's a, clear, it's a message to everyone else who says, look, we, we run the show. And guys, yes, we do what we want. And if you basically, if anyone else out there thinks it's worthwhile to kind of, you know, fight for whatever they think they believe at, the, at our detriment, we'll get you, man. We'll get you. Okay, now keep this in mind, okay? Every, every cricketer knows why uh, Steve Smith and Dave Warner were banned for a year, and Bancroft, of course. Um, this, it, it was a message, it was a clear message. And that's it, man. And I just want, I just want again, it's, I want to drill this in. The media, the public, and the fans, they booed the wrong guys. They should have been booing Cricket Australia. Um, I'm not saying cricket, Australia's cricket board is any better than the Indian cricket board or the English cricket board. West Indies cricket board has been dog shit ever since they kind of, you know, um, ever since they existed. But Cricket Australia did not do the right thing by banning Warner and Smith. And it was, it was public manipulation at its highest, man, at the very best. And people lapped it up. Social media lapped it up. Morons who just kind of think, you know, who just want an opinion over nothing. They don't understand what's going on. They lapped it up. And it, it, was, it, it was just, it was sick, man. It was disgusting. So, okay, guys, look. It's, um, if you can, please, if, you sh if this message resonates with you, please share this video wherever you can. Whether it's forums whether it's to friends on Facebook, Facebook groups, Reddit, any place, please share it. And um, yeah, just, just this, this needs to get out more. And for fuck's sake, man, when you hear someone, these flipping retard half fans, um, saying, oh, one of the team, shut the fuck up. You don't know shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay. 
All right, guys. Uh, yeah, if you like this and you want more, I've got a weekly cricket show as well, um, which I run at cricketuncensored.com. Uh, yeah, brilliant, man. Okay, and obviously all the normal stuff as well. Like it, leave me a comment, man. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.